So, for the longest time, I have been a very, very vocal advocate that sooner or later another Adpocalypse was going to happen. And lo and behold, Adpocalypse 3.0 has happened. And once again, the only people to blame for this are the Edgelords. So let's go rewind the clock back because I've got a number of new viewers who might not have seen these videos before. Um, so let's go over basically what I've been saying. Um, back in the day, um, I did a video against the quartering and his ridiculous, completely ridiculous idea of how you get uh, SJWs out of your community and how you should police your community to a point where people would be literally strapped to a chair and inquisitioned <laughs> before they would even be allowed to enter your community. That is not a community anyone would want to be a part of or, you know, <laughs> uh, comment or anything like that. And I was right. Um, most of his uh, message boards and things like that, even though he has a quote-unquote large audience, um, they're not really there. Uh, he's soon going to launch, I think he's about to launch it, is um, his new gaming website where there's going to be no politics. <laughs> yeah, and we'll see how long that lasts. I'm guessing it'll be about a day before we see an article about there's somebody putting politics in my games. Oh no. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's just laughable. Um, I can't believe that I um, was down that rabbit hole at one point, but there you go. But one of the things I said in my original video to him was, look, sooner or later, you're going to piss off the wrong person. And ironically, the quartering is a prime candidate for this. Here you had a guy who was really big in the Magic the Gathering community and then decided for some bizarre reason I'm going to attack everyone else in this community. How many friends did you think he had in that community who stood up for him by the end? Yeah, exactly. No, no one. So when it came time for uh, people said, okay, we've had enough of this guy, let's just give him the boot. No one stood up for him, and no one wanted him around anymore. And he got that because he was being quote-unquote edgy. The edge lords. And then we move on, and you had the uh, the big, big one where all the advertisers pulled out, and this is where you start getting the, the yellow monetization button and people were freaking out about that. But once again, if an advertiser doesn't want to advertise on your video, that's their right. Once again, this is um, <laughs> the biggest quote unquote free speech advocates are also the biggest advocates for capitalism, except when capitalism does a bad thing to them, then all of a sudden they have a problem with capitalism. Uh, you have people like uh, Paul Joseph Watson, who rails against uh, government takeover of things, um, you know, government ownership or things like that, or he praises big businesses, but then comes out and says, oh no, Twitter should be privatised. It should be made a public utility. <laughs> so these guys are not consistent on their, uh, on their views at all. Um... You now have sort of the Adpocalypse, the Adpocalypse 3.0, and this has been caused by Stephen Crowder, another edgy guy on the internet who, well, being edgy for edgy's sake. And one of the things you have to understand about all these people committing these, you know, edgelord crimes is sooner or later someone's going to come along who does something more edgy than you. So you have to compete. So you have to sharpen your own edge to be able to compete against them, to be able to win back your viewers or, you know, make sure that, you know, you retain your audience. And sooner or later, 
all that ha starts to happen, you start to cut other people. There's a very good reason why, especially on the right, all these edgelord guys and groups, when they come together, very quickly, literally almost, you know, six months to a year down the line, they have very public falling outs. Because sooner or later, they can't have friends because they've got to start cutting each other. And that's that's how it this is how it happens. And then do you think advertisers seriously want to um advertise with the kind of stuff that they were saying? You know, you had Steven Crowder literally targeting one guy for continuous um you know, homophobia and racism. And that's been quite clearly against YouTube's terms of service for quite some time. The big problem is is YouTube doesn't tend to act and whereas other YouTubers, um, Quartering, Dankula, Sargon, you name them, can get away with attacking smaller YouTubers because they don't have the voice to um, say, hey, look what this guy's doing. He's clearly breaching the terms of service. However, um, the guy from Vox, uh, Carlos... Um, Mendez, I think was, that's what his name was, but I know his first name was Carlos, um, had a large enough voice to attract YouTube's attention and to punish literally this guy who's been going on at this. And yes, yeah, some people, um, quite clearly innocent people, have been caught up in this. But I can't blame YouTube for doing what they were doing. This is them literally defending... Uh, their business and their platform, basically from people who have decided that they are going to be an edge and they don't matter who they're going to cut, how much blood they start to bleed. Now, I'm not talking about actual violence, but in terms of being edgy, sooner or later, you know, no one wants to be your friend, no one wants to be your ally, no one wants to advertise on the stuff that you are saying, because sooner or later you, you cross so many lines. And I think they know when they cross these lines, because they want to try and push that line even more and even further. But hey, if an advertiser doesn't want to advertise with you... <laughs> So be it. That's that's capitalism. But so many times these guys come out and go, "Oh, the 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 you know disowning my freedom of speech." You know, you can't have it both ways. You can't go out and say um, these really ridiculous extremist things and then go, "Money, please," from Google. Because sooner or later, these advertisers don't want to give money to Google for their ads to appear on that stuff. And that's perfectly reasonable. And I've been saying this um, since probably before the first Adpocalypse happened. But there you go. Now you have Adpocalypse 3.0, and the person to blame isn't uh, Vox, because the, the, the alt-right and the right wing are calling it the Voxpocalypse. They've got nothing to do with it. It's Steven Crowder and people like him who have caused this. So if you have been demonetized, don't, you know, stand with Steven Crowder. Stand with Carlos because he was being, you know, abused by these people who seem to think they have every right to say whatever the hell they want without consequences. And here's another thing. Getting back into the whole uh, Dankula uh, situation. He recently had a, I think it was the third talk he's had with Kevin Logan, and it was very, very interesting, because everything he said in my discussion with him, he did a complete 180 with Kevin Logan. I, in my chat, as an example, I said, well, Thank you, you are a free speech absolutist. And he denied it vehemently. He denied it really vehemently as a as, as so something he'd held belief. I you know, he even said, I'm not a free speech absolutist. But in Kevin Logan's um chat, he said, Yeah, I am a free speech absolutist. <laughs> now, two things can happen. 
Uh, and there's other stuff he said in that. And to be honest, I'm, I really don't care uh, about it. You know, go and watch the two debates yourselves and, you know, you'll see there is a massive difference between what he said, I think it was like a year, year almost a year apart. Now, there's two things that can explain this. One, he's changed his mind on, on stuff. If he has, that's fine. You know, people change their mind on things all the time. Or, he's being really disingenuous about what he is saying, what he is believing, and he's just, you know, doing it for an act. And I really believe that is what it is. Because if the first one is right, then you would have to at least see some form of evidence that he has changed his position on certain topics. But he hasn't. He's still saying the exact same things he was saying that caused me to call him a free speech absolutist, which he vehemently denied in my discussion with him, but was fine being called with Kevin Logan. So the only reason is he's completely disingenuous, but there you go. Um, so yeah, don't blame um, Vox for this latest adpocalypse because this is on uh, the right wing, specifically the far right, and specifically on all the edgelords on that side who have decided they want freedom of speech, but they don't want any form of consequence.